All right, so in this video, I'm very excited. I should have done it earlier, but too many successful students lately, good problem to have. Gotta give props to one of my hardest working students, Ellis Hobbs, check out the lessons from his journey. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor uh, Trader? Long overdue, nearly a month after this article came out. I'm sorry, Ellis. Um, a lot of my students are getting featured in the press these days. Very cool to see. And I think that there's a lot of lessons, not just about bragging like, oh, we're featured in the press. There's actually some pretty amazing lessons. So this article is called a retired football player turned stock trader short shares the top four strategies that helped him go from losing over 34,000 to making over 400,000. Um, this is with my uh, challenge student turned uh, mentor, uh, Ellis Hobbs. Those of you in the challenge chat know him as Art of War. Uh, if you click the link below, you can get in my challenge chat. Ellis is in there every single day, along with several of my other top millionaire students. We have a great uh, community separate chat room. Out of all the chat rooms I've ever seen, my challenge chat room is the best. This is probably why all my millionaires are coming from the challenge. They have the most useful information, the best community. So Ellis uh, began trading stocks from his mobile phone 2016. Took him until 2020 to become profitable after nailing down his own process. So this is very common. It does take one, two, three, four years. He's a father, he's a husband, he's busy, he's mentoring other people now too in the challenge. Um, he says, trading guidelines and rules aren't to make you profitable, but to keep you from large losses. Could not agree more. So many people are so worried about making a lot of money. They have no risk management or very little risk management. And it's a very slippery slope. Um, so I'm very proud of all my millionaire students. Ellis is not yet a millionaire. He's only made a few hundred thousand dollars, um, but he's on his way. And again, it's all about risk management. He's a former NFL player. Can we show the NFL play that he did? Successful football career on his now successful trading career and on his work ethic. And if you're in the challenge, thank him for being such a hard worker and mentoring other students. Um, his article says Ellis, uh, Hobbs's career was uh, cut short uh, by a neck injury that ended it all. He was drafted by the Patriots 2005 in a backup role. 2009, he went on to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. When his career suddenly ended in 2011, Hobbs was dealing with a shock and had no plan for what he'd do next. Um, what he knew for sure was that he needed an income to cover his bills and support his family, so he began by working in sales uh, for an alcohol distribution company. During this time, he heard about trading stocks from a colleague. Uh, the conversation led to Timothy Sykes, a trading teacher, former penny stock trader known for claiming to flip his bar mitzvah gift money 12000 into one. But I love this that I'm like a former penny stock trader and I'm known for claiming to flip. Like, this is like all like legal, like, oh, he, he's a former penny stock trader. He claimed to flip. Everything is backed up. I got it all audited. I'm not a former penny stock trader. Don't even get me started. Um, it's fine. I can deal with it. Uh, by the way, if you're going to click the link below, understand I'm still trading. Understand I just had my two best trading years ever in 2020, 2021. I hate misinformation. The only exposure he had to investing until then was through a 401k. Even then he had no idea his money was being allocated. He had no idea how his money, it's actually a typo. Good job reporter. Um, for him, it was an account he contributed part of his paycheck to. So the money grew. It was out of sight, out of mind, he noted. By 2016, he was listening to audio, watching YouTube videos from Sykes' page. One specific video stood out to him, an episode where Sykes was trying to teach two NBA players how to trade. That's another crazy part. Um, at that moment, Hobbs grew confident that he too could learn. It prompted him to apply to Sykes' Millionaire Challenge, an online educational training course that helps beginners learn to day trade. If you click the link below, this is where you too can apply. By the way, the two NBA players... And there was a few other NFL players. They did not continue on their education. Props to Ellis for continuing. Um, he says the program allowed him to take a deeper dive into learning technical skills behind trading. The same year he started trading stocks from his mobile phone. He deposited enough cash to meet the pattern day trader rule, which requires a $25,000 minimum to day trade. I would not start with $25,000. I would start with less. As Ellis and many other students prove, you're not going to make that much in the beginning. So it's better to lose small while you're learning. And I know that's tough to learn. Everyone wants to make money right away to prove to yourself, to prove to others, prove you ain't got nothing to prove to nobody but yourself. And if you ain't done that by now, it ain't gonna never happen. Little movie called Rudy. 
What's up, Tim Sykes here with the legend, Rudy oh. of Notre Dame fan and Disney movie classic. Sir, it's an honor to meet you. Okay, two corrections. Real, I'm telling one, I'm not a legend, right. you're the legend. No, stop. And two, we're in Henderson, Nevada at the district. It's beautiful here, it really is. But more importantly, we connected because of a feeling. And the leadership that we have within us all comes from a feeling of hope, it comes from the feeling of a want to, it comes from the feeling, let's do it. And that's kind of like, fundamentals of it and following your dreams following and your goals up. and dreams you're gonna have setbacks give you the step up you're five foot nothing a hundred <laughs> nothing you got hardly a speck of athletic ability in you you hung around with the best football team in the land for two years and on top of this you're gonna walk out of here with a degree from the University of Notre Dame prove you ain't got nothing to prove to nobody but yourself and if you ain't done that by now it ain't gonna never happen Boy, it's a good thing no one's around us. <laughs> no, seriously, it's an honor to meet you. Honor, You've Tim, inspired God me. You, buddy. Get inspired. I met Rudy. If you're familiar with that football movie, I gave him his own speech from his movie. He didn't like it. It was funny. Um, however, at the time, he still had little knowledge of what he was doing. He set up an alert for a few stocks from his phone. One day when he was at the movies, an alert of one of the stocks went off. He stepped out of the theater, called his brokerage. Uh, wanted to go short on the stock. Hobbs then followed up with a second question, asking for more clarity on what shorting was. Thinking back now, the guy was trying to talk me out of it because he could clearly hear I didn't know what I was doing. At the time, he had no entry or exit plan on the trade. He just felt compelled to jump in and test his skills. Be very careful. This happened with Ellis. This happens with a lot of students. You want to run before you can walk. I would rather you trade small or even paper trade. Have a specific plan before you risk any of your hard-earned money. Uh... I said, hey, just for my knowledge, one more time, when I short the stock, yeah, I'm betting it goes down, right? And when he heard that, he took his deep breath and he was like, Mr. Hobbs, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this right now. I was like, okay. And I heard him, but I didn't listen. Uh, he proceeded to short the stock. Hobbs then put the phone back on his pocket, occasionally checking. He ended up losing money on the trade, but the phone call and the representative's advice stuck with him. He realized two major things at that moment. One, he needed to learn more. Second, if he could just figure this out, he'd be able to trade from anywhere. I agree. You do need to learn. And you can't trade from anywhere until you learn. Again, so many people think that it's just going to be easy. Nobody looks at the studies. 90% of traders lose. I know you see this little dancing baby from E-Trade. Oh, it's so easy. If it were realistic, the baby would be bloodied, bruised. It wouldn't be on TV. Most traders suck. Most people lose money, especially in 2022. Um, for the next couple of years, Hobbs would continue trying to trade, sometimes from his phone, sometimes from his laptop, but juggling was a bad combination. By 2018, he was down 34,000. This is why I say trade with a small account. You can't run before you walk. You're probably going to lose money in the beginning. Jack Kellogg, one of my millionaire challenge students who's over 10 million, lost 2,600 in year one. Tim Grittani, another one of my eight figure students, made nothing his first nine months. You're not going to do better than Tim Grittani or Jack Kellogg. Uh, Hobbs said I was depressed, I was frustrated, and I had to hide it all because I didn't want my family to know. This happens. Just be honest. I know that you want to prove to your family, your friends, that you're a great trader, that you're going to profit. I know some people are like, I joined your challenge, Tim, because I believe in you and I want to prove you're not a scam. You not following the rules, whether you make money or lose money, doesn't prove that I'm a scam or not. It just means you're undisciplined. I get this all the time. Trust the process. That's what I'm begging you to do. Um, he said, as he watched other traders in Sykes' program succeed, he told himself this couldn't be that difficult. He was seeing them make money, but noticed they were following a process. Light bulb. Can we do an audio effect of a light bulb? Angels. I want angels singing. He noticed they were following a process. Angels. I don't need a halo. I just need angels. His focus then turned to finding his own strict process that would be based on technicals. He spent the next couple of years taking on small gains here and there, but occasionally losing them to a larger loss. By the end of 2019, he started to build momentum, flipping his ratio towards more gains. It's all about controlling your losses. Ellis, in the beginning, was succeeding, but he did not control his losses, and his losses outweighed his gains. I still lose roughly 30% of the time, but my losses are puny, minuscule. By the time the raging bull market of 2020, Hobbs was able to trade both long and short. In 2020, he recorded gains of 225,000. 2021, he made an additional 182,000, according to a brokerage document viewed by Insider. The early mistakes helped him learn what not to do, 
then he was prepared for the hot market of 2020 and 2021. All my new millionaire students started in slow years, 2016, 17, 18, 19, and then maximized the hot market. 2022 was a slow market. 2023 so far is a slow market. Use slow markets to build your knowledge and be more prepared for a hot market. I hope it's a slow market 2023 and 2024. Will you be ready to capitalize on 2025, 2026, 2027? Most people aren't thinking like that. Most people want money right away instead of thinking it's a marathon and not a sprint. Like I say, it's a multi-year plan. Uh, for example, from March uh, 2020, he traded IBIO multiple times because the stock had been running up for mul multiple months. Former runners can be runners again. The more he traded the stock, the more he became familiar with the characteristics and patterns. Stocks do have characteristics like people. He was able to take both long and short trades on it, it was profitable multiple times. Once you learn a process, it's rinse and repeat. However, his trades lean more towards shorting stocks, which is when a trader borrows for a fee and sells them anticipating a lower price. Many of my top students are short sellers. Very dangerous, very crowded strategy right now. Um, the trader can then buy them back at a lower price before returning the shares. It's a risky strategy in which the losses can be infinite. No stock has ever gone to infinity. Your losses are not infinite, but you can lose more than you put in, which freaks people out and there have been short squeezes. I hardly ever short these days. Uh, therefore, the most important factor is knowing his maximum pain point, which is the amount he's willing to lose in any position for him. It's 15 to 20 cents on the dollar. He has a risk, according to this article, of 15 to 20 percent losses. My loss risk, I don't use hard stops, but I don't want to lose more than like three or five percent. I would really encourage you to tighten up your risk, even if you exit too soon, cut losses too soon, and then the stock goes the way you want. It's good to have a really conservative process first. You can get more aggressive later on. As for the pattern, the first thing he looks for is a stock that has become a big percent gainer. My tip, buy at least 20% or more within a day. I like 30% and has moved multiple days in a row. Multi-day winners are better, more predictable uh, between two and three days of upwards momentum. I prefer five, six, seven days. Depending on the number of days the stock has been running, Hobbs decide whether he will enter long or short. That's oversimplification. Over simplification. I'm trying to talk really fast. We have food coming. I'm hungry. Typically, I'm trying to trade a multi-day runner long within the first two, three days. Three is pushing it. I would say even two is pushing it, LS. Calm down. You're not in the NFL anymore. After the third day, you'll likely take the opposite trade by shorting the stock once it gets rejected by a resistance line, which is a technical indicator. A signals the stock price may be rejected after a certain amount. I used to short third or fourth green days. Usually, stocks would come down. But again, right now, there's a lot of short sellers partially because of me and my successful students. Some of these plays that normally tanked on day three or day four, they're taking on day five, six, or seven. So you don't want to short too early and risk pain as it goes higher. Uh, he pays attention to the volume when a stock starts moving. This indicates the numbers of shares trading. The volume needs to be abnormal by being significantly higher than its historical volumes. The increase must also be congruent with the stock's run-up. This tells him that there's a lot of attention. So basically, we're trading high-volume stocks, my biggest loss once upon a time in Cygnus E transactions, trading in a liquid stock. I couldn't get out if I wanted to, I had too big of a position. So you want to take small positions and have there be a lot of volume. Ideally not be more than one or 2% of the daily volume. Uh, he reviews the stock's historical resistance lines to determine the chances of breaking above or below. Most of the time those lines hover around half or whole numbers, he noted. This is especially true for small caps. This is because he has noticed there tends to be resistance around a stock hitting around whole numbers, especially if the share price is below 20. Newbies love stop losses and they love whole numbers. So these key numbers, like if a stock is going up and it takes out $20 or $10 or $5 on the way up, it creates a wave of buying because everyone's like, we broke through to new highs. Similarly on the way down, when support is failing at $5, $3, $2, there's a lot of stop losses and it creates a tsunami of sellers right at these key levels. Sometimes like a stock, that's dropping might bottom not at two, but at 201 or 202, and it never takes the stop losses out, and then it might be a dip buy. Number five pattern for my seven step framework. Um, normally, Hobbs doesn't trade based on headline news, but on October 19th, Xnet was running up on his phone. He then checked a group of traders that were discussing without knowing the details. He randomly began shorting. He decided to hold his position. The stock didn't fall in price. He lost over 14,000. Never randomly trade, never trade while you're at Disneyland or Disney World. If you're distracted, one, 
small loss, one small mistake can turn into a potential disaster. Several of my millionaire students have done this. Even Tim Gratani takes like a seemingly innocent trade. You take your eye off it and it can blow up in your face. Um, however, he emphasizes that these general guidelines are there to help him execute a trade, whether it's a win or loss. When I talk to new traders or when I'm mentoring and teaching, I tell them this, my guidelines and rules are not there to make you profitable. What they're there for is to keep you safe and to give you clarity. End of story. Pretty amazing. We'll link the story below. I'm sorry that they made it like into like this premium uh, article. There's so much that you can learn from my millionaire students. Thank you again to Ellis. Please congratulate him uh, in the comments below for sharing his journey, for mentoring other challenge students. Amazing work ethic. It's usual for, you know, a lot of my top students have an amazing work ethic. It helps if you're a former athlete. I played tennis for 10 years. Roland Wolf played semi-pro soccer. Um, you know, Ellis was uh, in the NFL. Jack Kellogg was a you know, professional valet driver. Whatever it is, you learn work ethic and you study up. This is just a quick summary. I think the food's gonna be here anytime. I'm so hungry. But get inspired by my millionaire students. Leave a comment below. Please congratulate Ellis. Thank him for sharing. Click the link below if you wanna join my challenge. Ellis is mentoring. I'm mentoring. Several of my other millionaire students are mentoring. Nothing's easy, but it does get easier with a process, with discipline, with rules, with a framework. And that's what we teach. No random trading, no hodling, no gambling. Be disciplined, get successful. Goodbye.